the 20 gauge shotgun gradually evolved into its current hunting role through advancements in ammunition and gun technology. In a 100 year span, it went from a woman's cartridge to the most popular upland game hunting cartridge in America. The 20 bore shotgun started life just like most of the other shotgun calibers did, as European muzzle-loaded smoothbore guns in the late 1600s. Before the word shotgun was coined by Americans in 1776, these flintlock smoothbore muzzleloaders were known as Fowlers. The real revolution in shotgun technology happened in the 1860s when shotgun cartridges were first invented. The first shells were all brass. Then, for economic reasons and practicality, paper shells became the norm. These paper shells were easily damaged if exposed to moisture and had a very short sh uh, shelf life, so were later coated with wax to provide some resistance to moisture. In 1960, Remington invented the plastic shell, which along with better modern smokeless powders, brought us into the modern age of the shotgun. Whether you're in the UK and you call it the 20 bore, or you're in America and you call it the 20 gauge, the usefulness and Hunter's opinion of this great cartridge have changed drastically over the years. In the first half of the 20th century, the 20 gauge was considered, you know, a gun suitable for only women and children. And Real men used 10 and 12 gauges for everything, but as cartridge design improved, gunpowder improved, and shell materials improved, the 20 gauge was soon performing just as well as the 12 gauge guns did before. So all of a sudden, you can get standard 12 gauge performance out of a lighter gun that recoils less. And the 20 gauge shotgun soon began skyrocketing in popularity in America. Of course, those same improvements caused the 12 gauge to almost completely kill the 10 gauge, and it caused the 28 gauge to become relevant again. But as the 20 gauge became mainstream, all ammunition manufacturers agreed to make 20 gauge cartridges yellow in color. So when you see a yellow shell, you know, that means it's 20 gauge. And this was done so you don't accidentally load a 20 gauge shell into a 12 gauge shotgun. So remember, if the shell is yellow, it's 20 gauge. Today, the 20 gauge is the most popular upland game cartridge in America. And quite honestly, I now believe that the 20 gauge is the perfect upland game cartridge. But I didn't always feel this way. Back in the day, I used to hunt everything with the 12 gauge. Whether I took out my Model 12 or my Wingmaster or my A5 or my 1100. I always had a pouch full of 12 gauge shot shells with me. I had really light loads that I would use for upland game like doves and quail and heavier magnum loads for waterfowl or turkey. You know, and this worked out great for me and was how the last three generations of my family hunted. Then one day I made the mistake of actually using a 20 gauge. I was quail hunting with a couple of friends and my gun went down. I think I was uh, hunting with an 870 at the time and my gun went down with an extractor problem. So I hunted with my buddy's 20 gauge uh, Remington 1100 rifle, you know, using a uh, light number eight lead shot. And that damn gun put down every bird I pointed it at. I mean, it was fantastic. And most importantly, on those uh, 
close five, six yard shots when we would kick up coil. I wasn't blowing birds to smithereens. I mean, I was instantly hooked on the 20 gauge. Then when I went out and got my first 20 gauge, I was in heaven on those long hunts with that light six pound gun. You see out west to get quail on public land, we often have to go hiking around in the hills for hours at a time just to find pockets of cubbies to shoot at. The fact that that 20 gauge gun was two pounds lighter than my 12 gauge was a huge benefit in the field. I also found that the slimmer profile of the 20 gauge fit me better and was easier to handle in the field. And as I got older in years, I started putting aside my over and under and pump action shotguns. And I started to enjoy using semi-autos more. And to my delight, I found that those light dove and quail loads that I shoot a lot of the time, actually most of the time, cycle much more reliably in the 20 gauge platform than they ever did in a, a 12 gauge automatic platform. Basically, when I shoot those light coil loads in my 20 gauge auto, they cycle really reliably. But when I'm shooting my 12 gauge autos, like my A5, and I try to step down to those really light coil loads, it wouldn't cycle very reliably. So that was another plus for the, uh, for the 20 gauge, in my opinion. If you use a semi-auto shotgun and you want to use really light loads, the 20 gauge is really the way to go on that. Currently, the 20 gauge is more versatile than it's ever been because of the huge variety of ammunition available for it nowadays. You know, everything from soft shooting three quarter ounce loads for dove and quail up to hard hitting three inch magnums for uh, turkey and even ducks. Yeah, a lot of people shoot ducks and waterfowl with uh, with the 20 gauge nowadays. The 20 gauge is also absolutely perfect for those rabbits you occasionally come across while out quail hunting in the desert. You know, there's even some fantastic cheap steel loads available for the 20 gauge nowadays that perform absolutely fantastic. Now, please understand what I'm not doing here is claiming that the 20 gauge is just as powerful as the 12 gauge because it isn't. But the 20 gauge does come in a lighter package that recoils less and handles lightweight upland bird loads better than the 12 gauge does. You know, in the past, I looked at the 12 gauge as a one size fits all solution to all bird hunting. But in retrospect, I have to admit that I was wrong. And that the, you know, even though the 20 gauge isn't perfect for everything, it is a much better upland cartridge than the 12 gauge is. One huge fallacy that new hunters make a lot of the time is they try to apply center fire rifle logic to shotgun ammunition. You know, it's logical to say that a 300 Winchester Magnum is going to deliver a lot more energy than the 308 cartridge will. But this reasoning doesn't necessarily transition into the shotgun world. Basically, a pellet from a 12 gauge load firing number six shot at 1,350 feet per second will deliver the exact same energy to the target as a pellet from a 20 gauge load firing number six shot at the same velocity. So 12 and 20 gauge pellets hit at the same with the same amount of energy if they're traveling at the same velocity. Where the 12 gauge has the distinct advantage is in delivering more pellets downrange for any given load, which is a real plus. But this advantage comes at a price, 
and that price is more recoil, um, you know, using a gun that's heavier and physically larger than a 20 gauge shotgun. So most upland hunters are willing to sacrifice that extra punch of the 12 gauge in order to have a uh, handier gun, you know, for easier to kill upland game like quail and doves. Another very interesting thing you'll find with shotguns is that patterning is way more important than payload, you know, or bore diameter. A properly choked and patterned 20 gauge will kill a poorly choked and patterned 12 gauge. So in the same way that you zero your deer rifle before hunting season, you should always pattern your shotgun before using it. And you need to repattern your shotgun anytime you make a change, like you change your load or you put in a different choke or you're using a different brand of choke. It makes a big difference. So, but when you go out in the field, you could see here with these two examples right here um, that these are both number six shot fired with a skeet choke at 25 yards. And this is 20 gauge and this is 12 gauge. And you could see in this particular example right here, the uh, the 20 gauge, in my opinion, was actually shooting a little bit better than the 12 gauge. So, you know, just because you're going into the field hunting with a big old 12 gauge doesn't mean that you're outperforming the guy shooting a 20 gauge. As a matter of fact, the guy with the 20 gauge, if he's properly patterned his shotgun, he's, uh, he's going to kill you out on a day of hunting if uh, you didn't properly pattern your 12 gauge you know too many people go out to the store and their good local gun shop and purchase a 12 gauge off the shelf and just take it out hunting and to me that's unacceptable you need to choose the ammo you want to use get a couple of chokes and set up a target at the average distances that you'll be hunting and actually pattern the thing i mean for all outs you need to know where it's hitting you need to know where you need to hold your front sight in relation to the target, you know, some guns, you know, you're, uh, you got to hold over the front bead. Some guns, you got to hold the bead below the target. And some guns, I mean, you got to cover the target with the barrel. So you never know until you pattern. So in the end, I have a two caliber battery for all of my shotgun hunting needs. My 12 gauge handles waterfowl and turkeys, and my 20 gauge pretty much handles everything else. Adding the 20 gauge to your hunting arsenal is well worth it in my opinion. It's one of those things where I can promise you that upland hunters who claim to hate the 20 gauge have probably never tried it before. I'm on, you know, I'm a third generation of hunters that did everything with the 12 gauge and I was even one of those people, I'll admit it, I was one of those people that looked down on the 20 gauge. But, I'll admit it, I was wrong. With modern loads and firearms, the 20 gauge is about perfect. Especially in a good semi-auto loader like this A400 that's quickly becoming my favorite shotgun. So in conclusion, my advice is to own two shotguns at least. One in 12 gauge for waterfowl and turkeys and one in 20 gauge for everything else. You know, be mindful that I'm by no means an expert on upland hunting or waterfowl hunting. You know, I just go out when I can, usually with no dog and do the best I can. Sometimes I work my ass off and get nothing and sometimes things come easy and I get a barbecue grill full of birds with little effort. So this video isn't based off of scientific fact or uh, established expert opinion. It's just a narrative of my own personal experiences hunting with a shotgun. Well, I want to thank you for watching another one of my videos. And be mindful that you can contact me at DesertDogOutdoors at gmail.com. That's DesertDogOutdoors at gmail.com.
And uh, if you have any questions or comments, I'll try to uh, address them on my next Hunt Camp Mail episode, which should probably air within the next week or two. And as always, thanks for enjoying my channel and good hunting.